So a Jagta articular deformity is, you know what is Kora? Uh, so the uh, Jagta articular deformity is one where the center of rotation lies in the region of the joint. Okay? Like in this one, you can't definitely say exactly where is the center of rotation. So, uh, okay, no, this is not working. Okay, uh, so this is where the uh, mechanical axis planning is really important. Because in a diastasial deformity, you can make out where the center of rotation is. So for this, how you do the uh, planning is that I have drawn the tracing of this bone. So that is the equivalent of the X-ray. Uh, it's like So this is the joint line. All right. That is the center of the head of the femur. Now, the mechanical axis of the femur. The mechanical axis of the femur is from the center of the head to the center of the knee. This is different from the mechanical axis of the limb. Mechanical axis of the limb is from the center of the hip to the center of the ankle. So if you want to resolve the femur according to the mechanical axis, it is from the center of the head to the center of the knee. Now you know that the this is the distal femoral joint line. You know that normally the angle is 87 degrees to the mechanical axis. Alright? Now in this case, when we draw this line, you find that this angle is only 68 degrees. That means the distal femur is in valgus relative to the mechanical axis. So, how do you find out where is the center of rotation? For the previous ex uh, exercises for the tibia, you drew the proximal axis and you drew the distal axis and you found out where both those axes meet. So, what is the proximal axis in the femur? From proximal axis of the femur, you know it subtends an angle of 90 degrees from the, uh, to the line which is drawn from the center of the head to the trochanter. So this is the trochanter headline. If from there if you draw a 90 degree angle, that will give you the proximal axis. In this case, it is the same as this line which I have drawn. So now you know what is the proximal axis, right? And what is the distal axis? Is a line which is 87 degrees to the distal femoral joint line. Is that clear? So in this case you see where that intersect is at or around the level of the joint. So if it intersects anywhere from here to here, that becomes the juxta articular deformity. Now what is the importance of the juxta articular deformity? You remember the rules of osteotomy which you said. The main rule which you should not forget is that the hinge always comes at the center of rotation. So whatever else you do, you do your osteotomy here, you do it here, the hinge has to be at the center of rotation. Now in this construct, it becomes a special kind of construct where the hinge has to be dropped from the ring. And because this whole area is intra-articular, naturally your osteotomy has to go higher up. Okay. So now I'll tell you about how you need to draw the, uh, how you need to construct the hinge. From yesterday's workshop you know that your first ring will be here and we said that it will be perpendicular to the mechanical axis. So you know, you can see that this is the distal femoral mechanical axis. Okay, uh, one more thing. This was the center of rotation and the magnitude of deformity is 20 degrees or 19 degrees. You want to say 87. I have kept it at 20 so that it's easier for me to measure. So the magnitude is 20 degrees. Alright? So this is where the distal ring will come. 
the rest of the uh, frame remains the same. So this is the distal ring and you have a proximal block which comprises of a ring here and an arch at that level. Okay? Between these two you want to keep about one hand spread so that you can do your osteotomy etc. Now what is the um, special speciality of the hinge? We said that this ring is going to come at the level of the adductor tubercle. But your hinge has to come, that's okay. Can you give a, the uh, hinge has to come at this level. So to do, to do that, what you have to do is drop the hinge of the ring. So that you can do by using a, I'll show you exactly what the construct is. So when you keep it like this, you can drop the hinge from the ring. Now because of the way that this is built, so that requires the use of a juxta articular and then the rod. So the main post fixes onto the ring. The bushing is so that you have an extension and this goes past the edge of the ring and you have the female post. Now that is one thing about all the measurements, this distance between this surface, you see this hinge is put the other way. Normally whenever you put the hinge, you keep the cut surfaces facing each other. This is the other way. And this distance is about, give me one of those legs. I'll just take out one Right? So when you put something like that, this distance is the same. So that, if you tend to mix your suppliers, then these things might not match and you start getting trouble. The same is true for a rancho. Two whole rancho, eh? Three whole. The, the thickness of a rancho, I am not saying that you use it, but is the same as the thickness of the bushing. Sometimes when you don't have a bushing, you can use a one whole rancho. But that is just, there are certain distances which are maintained in all these uh, instruments. So what we do is, we make, just like you made two hinges for the uh, oblique plane deformity correction, you make two hinges and fix them. Now one more thing was, over here, you know the concept of the bisector line, okay? So if this is the cora, and I want to do an opening wedge, where will the hinge placement go? Towards the convexity, right? So if I want an opening wedge, the hinge has to be on the convex surface, that is over here. I told you yesterday that when you keep your ring, you keep the center bolt aligned on to the center of the limb. So if you want to move your hinge towards the medial side, where will that go? It will go at least first hole on this side. Okay? So that is why we put the hinge one hole on the inner side. So the distal ring will have this juxta articular hinge. Is going to have not Can Everybody hear me? Yes, okay. So these are the center bolts and we said that the hinge axis requires two hinges. Now in this case, this is a pure valgus deformity. There is no deformity on the <coughs> lateral x-ray, right? It's only a deformity on the AP x-ray. So to correct this deformity, you need a hinge axis which is in the frontal plane. The frontal plane is front to back. That's why you don't have to move it around like for the last workshop you did one hole this side one. The whole thing has to be in both the holes are front to back. Okay?